Right, LG C8 review. Let's do this. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. And this is the 77-inch LG C8 OLED TV. It features the South Korean manufacturer's new Alpha 9 processor that's meant to bring improvements in noise reduction, decontouring, sharpness enhancement, and color mapping. If we go into the service menu, you can see that the chip type on the C8 is O18, which is different from last year's M16P chip. Now, looking at these labels, 2017 is M16, 2018 Alpha 9 is O18, so maybe the step-down Alpha 7 processor found on the B8 and Super UHD TVs will be codenamed N17, M, N, O, 16, 17, 18. Of course, I may be totally wrong, but I just love speculating about these kind of things. I digress. Also new for 2018's LG OLEDs are the introduction of one, 3D LUT auto calibration in conjunction with portrait displays, the developer of the industry leading Kalman calibration software that we use, two, black frame insertion or BFI for the first time ever in the history of LG OLED TVs, three, the ability to play back high frame rate or HFR videos at 120 frames per second through the internal apps and USB, but not over HDMI. Due to the lack of HFR content, we think this is more a novelty than a useful feature at the time I filmed this video, in May 2018. 4. Dynamic tone mapping in HDR game mode. 5. Logo luminance adjustment to dim static logos and reduce the risk of permanent screen burn. And finally, if you care about the usability side of things, LG's 2018 ThinQ AI Smart TV platform with Google Assistant and Alexa integration. With almost every OLED TV capable of boasting an extremely thin panel due to OLED's self-emissive display characteristics, the design from one OLED to another is usually differentiated by the stand. On the LG C8, this takes the form of a stand that curves forwards, partly to redirect the sound from the down-firing speakers. The stand is fairly wide, measuring about 104 cm in width on this LG 77 C8. And if you wish to place a soundbar in front of the TV, the clearance from the bottom of the screen to the base of the stand is around 6 cm. Our review unit had a very very slight tilt backwards, which I'm not entirely sure if it's intentional or not. Maybe I just need to screw harder. The connections are located on the left rear of the television. There are four HDMI ports, all compatible with the HDMI 2.0b and HDCP 2.2 standards. There's a slight bus from the power supply unit of our review sample at certain brightness levels. The bus is fairly soft and only audible if you mute the TV in a quiet room. Before I move on and talk about picture quality, I would like to thank UK electrical retailer Crampton & More for sponsoring this video. If you are thinking about buying a new TV, even if it's not this LG C8 OLED television, please support this channel by supporting Crampton & More. I work closely with the team at the annual HDTV Test TV shootout, and from time to time, they also loan me TVs to review TVs that maybe some manufacturers are not willing to send to me for testing. I find the staff's knowledge of the products they sell to be excellent. They'll give you unbiased, independent advice for your purchase. So if you call Kremlin and More on 0113-244-6607 and ask for David Corner, mention HDTV Test and he'll take care of you with great price and service. Thanks again for your support. The LG OLED 77C8 uses a WRGB OLED panel from LG Display. From this macro shot here, the subpixel structure is similar to last year's. Maybe the new subpixel structure we captured on the 55-inch C8 hasn't actually filtered through to the 77-inch version. OLED is capable of absolute blacks, since every single one of its 8.3 million pixels can be turned on and off independently of each other. And this true black level of zero candela per square meter will inject so much pop, depth, and dynamic range to all types of content, making even SDR material look HDR-like. And just like 2017 models, the ABL, or Automatic Brightness Limiter Circuitry on the LG C8, is less aggressive than OLEDs from other brands, 
meaning that high APL scenes will generally look brighter on LG than let's say Sony or Lerva OLEDs. Uniformity on our review sample was as good as we've seen from a consumer OLED TV, which is particularly impressive given the 77-inch screen size. In a pitch black room, we saw no vignetting or reverse vignetting on full field slides just above black, although there's still some thin vertical streaks, but no thick vertical or horizontal bands on certain slides. Bright uniformity was very good too. We saw no color tinting as we cycle through 40% to 100% video stimulus. Using the traditional manual calibration method, namely 2-point and 20-point white balance controls, I achieved excellent SDR color accuracy on our 77-inch C8 review sample, with none of the measured color patches in this challenging color checker SG chart exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Error 3, which means memory colors such as skin tones and foliage will look extremely realistic. Now, of course, the LG C8 features 3D LUT or lookup table auto calibration functionality, but after intensive testing, I won't be using it when calibrating professionally for home customers. The main reason is because once a picture mode has been auto calibrated using the 3D LUT, the color gamut, gamma, and white balance controls are all locked across all source inputs, and currently, there is no way to back them up. When I professionally calibrate a TV for a customer, I always copy down the calibrated settings at the end of the session and send them to the TV owner afterwards so that he or she can punch in the calibrated settings without having to call me out for another calibration in case the TV needs to be factory reset. This is simply not possible using the 3D LUT AutoCal on the LG 2018 OLEDs. Also, based on the numerous tests I ran, for the 3D LUT results to surpass the accuracy of my manual calibration, at least 1,000 points need to be measured, which would take hours just for one picture mode. So if I'm calibrating in this manner for a customer for day, night, game, HDR, and Dolby Vision modes, I'll probably have to camp in your house all week. Now, I know some of you don't mind me staying over, but I will feel really bad myself eating all your food, drinking all your beer, sleeping with. Another issue with the 3D LUT AutoCal is that it worsens gradation however slight, as you can see from this Spears and Mansell 2D ramp pattern. Now, don't get me wrong, I fully applaud LG and Portrait Display's collaboration to try and bring studio-grade color accuracy to the home via 3D LUT calibration, but this is cutting-edge stuff so some kinks are to be expected. I am providing feedback to both LG and Portrait Displays to iron out these kinks so things will improve in the future. At this moment though, if someone asks me to calibrate a C8, E8, or W8, I'll be doing it manually. I'm 100% confident that through my equipment, experience, and expertise, stunning color accuracy can still be achieved this way. After LG improved the motion performance on the 2017 OLEDs following a firmware update, I'm not really seeing any significant difference in the native 24p handling and frame interpolation of the C8 versus the B7 or C7. The key differentiator here is clearly the addition of black frame insertion on the 2018 models. Now, just like what we witnessed on 2017's Panasonic and Sony OLEDs, black frame insertion on the LG C8 is not the be-all and end-all we had hoped for. Yes, engaging BFI via the Motion Pro control improved motion resolution, but only up to the OLED ceiling of 650 lines according to this horizontally scrolling test pattern. In bright scenes, some flicker is visible, which may put off even hardcore BFI fans like myself. For 24 frames per second content, the BFI operates at 60Hz, so some telecynic judder would be introduced. But to be fair, I don't really see the point of using BFI for low frame rate material such as 24p movies since there's inherent blur in the content anyway. Also, the way LG has implemented BFI in the True Motion User submenu means that some frame interpolation is still being applied 
even with both the Jada and the Blur set to zero. As you can see from the interpolation artifacts, however subtle they may be around Del Potro's face. I'm pulling my hair out here. The whole point of BFI is to avoid using interpolation in the first place. Now, in game mode, frame interpolation is disabled by default, so BFI can be used to boost the motion clarity of 60 frames per second games, and it looks beautiful. Upscaling on the LG C8 is slightly sharper than the 2017 B7 based on this SMPT RP133 test pattern, but it could be because of the different overscan crop used by LG for 576i video signal. In any case, the difference is certainly not night and day. What's more interesting is the new decontouring filter within the Alpha 9 processor that's designed to reduce in-source posterization similar to the smooth gradation feature on Sony televisions. It does work. Enabling the decontouring filter results in smoother gradation in the sky of the Martian. Unfortunately though, LG put the decontouring filter under the MPEG noise reduction control, which also performs spatial noise reduction. So while engaging MPEG noise reduction did smooth out posterization in the sky, it also reduced some fine detail on Matt Damon's face. As a purist, I will on principle not use it, but if you are not as anal as me, MPEG noise reduction can come in useful for bit starved content with lots of posterization or macro blocking. After calibrating to D65 white point, peak brightness measured 700 nits on a 10% window, and DCI-P3 color gamut coverage was 98%. Both parameters are in keeping with a WRGB OLED panel not using the new subpixel structure. Full field peak brightness was only 117 nits rather than the 150 nits we usually get. Maybe it's because of the much larger 77 inch screen size. The dynamic tone mapping function works similarly to dynamic contrast low on 2017 LG OLEDs. You should see most intervention in 4000 nit content, either retaining specular highlight detail. Note that there's a slight lag here as the dynamic tone mapping kicks in, or brightening overall APL or average picture level as necessary depending on analysis of the incoming video histogram. If there's any improvement from 2017 models, I would say that the near-black PQ EOTF tracking is tighter on the LG C8, producing inkier just above blacks without crushing shadow detail, for example in the shot from Sicario. Turning our attention to Dolby Vision, Netflix through the inbuilt app didn't exhibit any sign of elevated black level in previously problematic scenes, including the opening credits of Mute and the end credits of Mindhunter, suggesting that LG is using the latest Dolby Vision library. With external HDMI source, however, the results depend on the interaction between the source Dolby Vision library and the display. So, for example, using the Apple TV 4K box, we saw some black level elevation and fluctuation in opening credits of Mute. Bottom line is, if you are watching Netflix Dolby Vision, try and watch it through the internal TV app rather than from an external source. Just like last year, input lag measured 21 milliseconds in 4K HDR and 1080p SDR game mode and engaging black frame insertion didn't increase the input lag. One big improvement over 2017 models is the availability of dynamic tone mapping in HDR game mode. Here's Assassin's Creed Origins, which is mastered to 4000 nits or higher in 4K HDR on the Xbox One X, and engaging dynamic tone mapping clearly boosted the overall brightness and made the shadow detail clearer. In my opinion, this is the single biggest reason to buy the LG C8 over the B7 or C7, and unfortunately, I've been informed by LG that it's not possible to add dynamic tone mapping to HDR game mode on 2017 OLED TVs due to hardware limitations. New for 2018, LG has added a logo luminance adjustment function on the company's OLED TVs, including the C8. The theory is that by reducing the brightness of static logos, the risk of permanent screen burn can be minimized, but from our testing, it seems to work 
based on detection of high contrast edges of non-moving objects. And even the low setting can dim the luminance of other non-logo elements on screen if they don't move. Again, as a video enthusiast, I'd rather preserve the integrity of the image, especially after calibration, than rely on an algorithm-based dimming which isn't even guaranteed to be effective. To be honest, the risk of burning on modern OLED TVs is extremely low anyway, as long as you vary the content you watch. So I'll choose not to use any protection. Sometimes, in life, you just have to take some risk. If you think that this review so far has a negative undertone, well, you're wrong because nothing could be further from the truth. Yes, I've pointed out several issues that could be improved, but I'm hypercritical, and that's who I am, that's what I do. At the end of the day, the LG C8 is still going to deliver some of the best picture quality on the market this year, with its key strengths being excellent color accuracy after calibration, less aggressive ABL than OLEDs from other brands, multi-format HDR support, and low input lag for gaming. And I know that this 77-inch C8 is still relatively expensive, but at £8,000, it's the most affordable 77-inch OLED on the market at launch, and I expect the price to come down even more around Black Friday or Boxing Day. So the LG OLED 77C8 gets our highly recommended Best in Class Award. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.